All right. This is a continuation of the um, second online Wix online meeting, and it's time for us to do triage. So off to the web we go to work our way through all of the available bugs and feature requests. Let's see if we can go and switch. All right, cool. You should now be seeing a web browser of all of our currently open bugs against the Wix tool set, which was the great work that we did last week. Um, and we're actually down a few, I've noticed, because I know I resolved a couple. Um, all right. Jacob, you still with me? Yep. All right. So we lost Bob. So Jacob has uh, graciously stepped up to play, uh, I don't know, tag along with the, uh, the bugs. All right. So I went, now we're looking at all untriaged bugs. So we have 761, which doesn't feel like a lower number than we looked at last week. Um, as Bob promised, I, he had opened a few of these bugs about Visual Studio 2013. Um, so it's time for us to go and work our way through that. Um, knowing that we're doing Visual Studio 2013 and knowing that we're doing that in 3.8, I think the answer is that this bug is going to be opened in triage. Uh, does that sound right, Jacob? Yeah, uh, obviously, yeah. If we're going to support that in the next release, we're going to have to do it. Yep, and I think that's what we're doing, so let's do that. So we're going to say open. Yep. And I'm going to copy this. And we'll leave it open. So I think we're going to work through these bugs very quickly. Photo should support 2013. I think we're all in agreement that that is what it should do. And we're going to leave it out there. And then we need the 2013 libraries of the native SDK, and that does sound right. Otherwise, people won't be able to build in 2013 against our stuff. So I think, if I remember correctly, those three bugs are the three bugs that Bob said we needed for um, uh, Wix 3. As far as I know. Uh, oh, is Bob back? All right, so Jacob, you ready to step down and let Bob take over his position here since he owns 3.8 more? Yeah, that's definitely fine. All right, I'm going to drop you back out to make an attendee. All right, now that we've done the, the stuff. So, Bob, we just triaged your bugs, and we said that they're all good. I'm assuming that's going to make you happy. Sure. Sure. All right, so Bob said he's going to go do scribe, so I don't have to type in front of you all you guys while we um, go through bugs. So... Let's go ahead and take the top, and we'll work our way down. Um, this is request control intermediate output log location for Visual Studio. Um, interesting. Do any of the other CS prods or any of those things let you change the intermediate location through Visual Studio? Good I don't, question. I don't, I don't think, I, don't think not they visually. do. Not visually. I mean, you certainly can go edit the project file by hand, which is what he says he can do. Um, Actually, that's wrong for C++. C++, you can change the intermediate. Yeah. Yes, of course, because you can do everything to C++, which is why their targets files are ginormous. Um, I'm ambivalent. Uh, personally, I'm like, no, but whatever. What do other people think? Can I get a plus one or a minus one from the peanut gallery? What do people think? Plus zero, minus zero? Bob? Uh, I care very little about this. Yeah. Uh, certainly, it's certainly not a 3.8 yeah. feature. It's uh, certainly not 3.8. I, <laughs> that I agree with. Do we keep it in 3x? So C Sharp does not offer the ability to control the intermediate path. I have a hard time getting up for this. Um, yeah, I, I I don't see the value in this. Uh, so, can I just can I just add something? Um, sure. I'd, I'd say that the nice refreshing thing about a Wix proj is well visually you know through votive that there is little to muck around with. Um, whereas yeah, as you say with C plus plus and C sharp these days you know you can get lost in in the properties. So. Um, um, and I have changed intermediate output path in some Wix projects, but yeah, um, this, I would I would bump this. 
All right, so uh, anybody want to vote for this, that, that we should do this right now? Or, I mean, in 3x. Because this is not a backwards-breaking change, so it means it would go into 3x by default, um, not 3.8. I don't think we'd hold 3.8 for it. Uh, no. So I'm looking for someone to say, yeah, we totally should add another field to the properties window, the properties pages, and let people control this. Yeah, this is just a request for adding a UI control to Vivotive to control the intermediate output path. Should we keep it in 3x, or should we just close it? We, we have to start closing. At some point, we have to stop taking features, or someone has to say, yes, I'm very interested in implementing this. Um, I'm inclined to just go, I think it would just make things more dirty. I would think it has to be quite, quite ruthless with these sort of low-priority things, because... Yeah, I'm not, I'm, um, Low priority aren't going to get done, so we have to decide if we're going to do it or not. Basically, do we think somebody should do this? Nobody ever wants to say no. If you're, going to look at, if you're going to look at adding this, then there's probably a load of other things that you could add in to the tabs as well. So, Bob, do you want to keep it in 3x or do you just want to go not worth it? And that's really the that's the decision point. Yeah, and and I, I agree. We should probably um, we should probably uh, get harsh on on right. low priority things All like right. this. So then, so then let's do this. Let's say you know, uh, yeah, I'd say we just don't do it. I don't think it's worth it to clutter up the properties pages. Of course, you know, he'll have the option to resend it to Shiraj if he wants and. Uh, can jump on this call if he'd like and fight for his bug to come back. That is the design of triage. So, uh, I, like, I like Jacob's suggestion. If, if this is important enough, send a pull request. I wouldn't refuse it. I, I would not spend any time doing this. Um, but I would probably not refuse. Okay, fine. Request. So then let's go ahead and send it. Uh, I guess it's rejected or something like that. Or what? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know that we have a resolution yet for this, uh, if you want to, um, <laughs> uh, but something like that. Bob, you want to go ahead and take care of that yeah, one? I will take care of this one. Sweet. All right, on to the next one. Exclude simple types from the Wix toolset.org manual, uh, yeah, the manual uh, table of contents. Simple types don't add, and they clutter it up. Right. Um, I have no idea why IS schema contains burn container type. That might be a bug, a different bug. But my assumption is it's just pulling in all the simple types from the Wix schema. That I believe it is. It probably okay. is pulling the simple types from all XSDs because um, they're all there, and the table of contents is the list of everything. Um, I, if someone wanted to do this, I'd be fine with it. But it's I'm not going. To, oh, Bob, you open this. <laughs> <laughs> he noticed. Uh, um. Sure. Uh, we could put it in 3x. It's not going to hold 3.8. Um, yeah, it, it can be done anytime. Is I, it worth I it? Yeah, I, I, well, I opened the book, so I'll discuss why I opened it. Um, mostly because it's a big, long page. There's another uh, feature request you'll see coming up that we could use uh, the little expando widgets. To, I'm going to go navigate there and see what we see. Uh, yeah, please. Um, it's it's a very long page, um, so it's uh, part of it is if we use like the expander widgets for the for the uh, levels yeah. of the TOC, it would be a bit more na navigable. Um, yeah. But yeah, you look in the in the, the extension schemas. There are a lot of simple types. Yeah, simple types. I mean, truthfully, simple types are really really rare. We already link to them, and I. I think that's sufficient. I don't think they need to be in the TOC. Yeah, you, you can know, see all these simple out. types here. Yeah, all right, all right. You've convinced me. There's a lot of them. I forgot how many get duplicated due to the way that you can't share between XSDs. Right. Yeah, all right. Um, all right, so 3X, I don't think we're going to hold 3.8 for it. Agreed. 
And it would probably be one of those things that when I get time, I might go look at. Unless someone wants to go dig into the doc build before I get to it. Um, the table of contents is long. Um, yeah, I care less about this. I'm okay with the really long because I like being able to do a find in page. But for me, that's the table of contents does that. That's fair. Um, I don't, yeah, but that's me. So yeah, I I don't care about this book. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I think it, it might be interesting to see what it looks like after removing the uh, the simple types. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let me. I'll leave a note myself. I might go look at the uh, simple types problem myself. Yeah, I, I, Jacob just brought up the fact that he'd like for a sitemap type. And there is actually a sitemap built for the um, manual. And I think it's all built correctly now. And we should have a sitemap on wixtoolsat.org. So you do have the actual sitemap for all the, the crawlers. But uh, I'm kind of like, you know, if we're going to have it, we should just have it and not worry about the expando kind of thing. But I think it's just simpler. Given that it's just one page, it's the whole purpose of the page. I don't know that we need to hide a lot of progressive you know, stuff go through. Um, bug in Visual Studio macro integration. I thought macros were gone from Visual Studio. Uh, these are variable oh. expansion macros, not... Oh, MS build variables. Yeah. Property pages. There's a bug in the way environment variables are handled. If I put that in my output path, I get underscore dir. So the interest and interesting question here is project name is not inserted. Okay. He's asking about, or he mentions using the um, the property page, and I recall vaguely. Oh, Visual Studio doesn't handle that well. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if this is just not getting written to the Wix project correctly. Um, I'm going to add a comment asking the submitter to uh, attach the works proj. I cannot Here's find the line. source code online. I cannot investigate further. Well, the source code's in a zip file in the release, and the source code is available on CodePlex, which is admittedly. Uh, even if I probably need to add a link to the source code on CodePlex. I bet there isn't one on Wix Toolset. I should do that. All right. I'll open a bug for that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I. I I had this problem when I was dealing with a C Sharp project recently where I was trying to pass in <laughs> the target name or something like that and it wasn't going to resolve for me. And I was like, in the end, I had to give it the full name because it's like, it gets confused of Visual Studio interprets it, what gets written to the project file which versus what's interpreted by Visual Studio side and stuff like that. I've had those problems in the past. Rob, does, does uh, uh, the bug tracker send mail? It does not yet. Okay. Open feature that needs to be done. Got it. But I'm going to push, now that we have these meetings kind of flowing, I'm going to start pushing them harder so people know they need to go look at things. I was just going to say, um, if you switch on diagnostic logging, it would probably tell you what was going on with that. Um, yeah, we need a little bit more information to know where this thing is not getting put. Because it's entirely possible this, if they're going through votive, this may not even be making it to the project file due to weirdnesses in Visual Studio not writing these things through. It's like Visual Studio interprets it, never ends up in the project file, and it gets all turned around. And th this bug you can actually see in other projects. There's actually a crash. You could get like the C++ projects to crash, or C Sharp projects to crash a while ago if you did this, I think. And then we also had the crash too. So. I've used project name in Wix projects, but oh yeah, I haven't specified it through the property pages. Yeah, I don't think it works well through the project pages because it gets eaten by Visual Studio. I think that's what this bug is going to turn into, which ends up turning into a unfortunate thing in Visual Studio. But, and I think the workaround is to go edit the project file by hand. But anyway, a little bit more information. Is that what you're going to add here, Bob? Is that we need a little more information? Yep. Yep. And 
yeah, it's not clear if this is MS Build or Votive. It's one or the other. Um, and it is going to be 3x. We're not going to hold, because I don't think this is new problems. Um, all right, onward. IS Web Unexpected Attributes Managed Runtime Version. Uh, this one, I added a comment. It's it's a user error. Um, I think we can go ahead and close this. Pipeline, but, but pipeline is one word, right? <laughs> yes, Not it is. Two. Why did they... What should have helped them do... Votive should have helped them with this. Validation should have done this. Yes. So, all right. The whole point is that it's case sensitive. So, yeah. All right, cool. So, I think we can close that as pilot error or whatever we're doing for pilot error. Um, accepted. Uh, I forgot what we do. MSI package with remote payload does not linked. Uh, this is another one. Um, it, it's not supported. Yeah, you can't remote payload MSI package. That doesn't work today. But that error right. is just pretty horrible. It's in the schema is the problem. Well, it is in the schema, yeah. And that error message is horrible. That is pretty bad. Agreed. Oh, it's an, yeah, that's that's bad. It's a crash. Um, we should fix this. I, I wouldn't hold 3.8 for it. We should fix this in 3x to at least get a better error message. But I wouldn't hold 3.8 for it. This has probably been in there since the beginning of remote payload being added. Yes, it, it is. Um, All right. So I'd say we put this in 3x. Was the intention to support all possible payloads? Um, maybe. Uh, I, remote payload came in really late. Yeah. Um, and so the, it may have been a dream that we could support it, but um, it, but it it's a challenge. It, it, MSI packages have a lot of data that you have to provide to make exactly. remote payload useful, so it, that ends up being really... It remains only really useful for XE packages. And yeah. yeah, and like Jacob said, one of the fixes is to not allow MSI pack or remote payload as a child of MSI package. That could be a fix. Yeah, I'm wondering if this might be a couple of bugs for three right. eight. We could take the so the my my fix. my incl inclination is that we put this in three X, and then if people want to, they can take a bug out of three X and say, "I'd like this in three eight, and then we could take it if it fits the criteria of where we're at three eight. Yep, it might absolutely. be. Yeah, that bug is way too scary. We can't take it right now. Or, yeah, that's a really simple fix. We'll take it, you know, whichever way you decide to go. So, But I say this goes 3x to start. I wouldn't hold 3a for it. If no, you agree. absolutely not. All right, cool. Links on wixtoolset.org are funky. That's kind of cool. Concatenated relative paths with black backslashes. Normalizing paths would make for better URLs. Oh, that a better... What? All right, let's go look at this URL. Because I have a web browser right here. Oh, which one? Product search, product search, product search, element, product search. Well, that looks okay to me. Documentation manual, v3, xsd, util, product search. I mean, that's right. And Try if and I click, the link. click on it, that looks good. Interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't see it. I think this is, well, I opened the bug. Oh, uh, well, good. I'm glad someone else opened it. What's the issue? Uh, um, I think IE is normalizing the URL. Oh, okay. Um, well, it should, it might be a relative path. I bet that's a relative It, it is. It is relative, uh, ah. but it's relative with the backslash. With a backslash instead of a forward slash? Yes. Oh. I got a bundle. I got a product search. Okay. And the here, let me actually inspect it. So the issue is that it's a backslash instead of a forward slash. Yeah. So looking at the uh, in the dev tools thing in yeah. on Firefox, it is uh, dot dot backslash util backslash product search. All right. Cool. So I thought there was something that was supposed to normalize those the other way, but I guess it isn't doing that. Um, so, yeah, that's a bug. I wouldn't hold 3.8 for it, though. Yeah. 
Um, so IE handles it. Figures coming from Windows, right? <laughs> right. If anyone's going to have expertise with backslashes, it would be the IE team. But yeah, I agree. We should we should fix that. There's no point in having backslashes and things. It should be slashes. It's going to be a relative path, but because I know how those pages get built, it's going to have to be a relative right. path. But it could be yeah, that's fine. the other slashes. All right, cool. So I think we could open that in 3x land. 3x. All right. Um, not change target dir. Not change target dir. Visual Studio with dark. It generated an MSI installation. Ah, uh, David just confirmed it works on Chrome. So it's Firefox that isn't normalizing. All right, fair enough. Anyway, we'll fix it because it would look prettier if it was the correct slashes. All right, yeah. so instead of installing the application desired directory of program files folder manufacturers installed in C, all the files are installed in this directory. Thank you, Green. This is a question. This is not a bug. Because you can do this correctly. Yeah, can we resolve this as a please go ask questions on Wix users? Sure. Because something, yeah. So he has a dir ca target dir. Oh, these sequence, it could be these sequence numbers are not in the right spot. Oh, that's interesting. Hard coded sequence numbers are always questionable. Right, and the, this is a VD proj conversion. Oh, I suppose this could be a dark bug. Could be a dark bug. I I don't care. Um, sequence numbers, but you have to have sequence numbers because they're not before or after in the right place. Oh. But why would they have mucked with the default sequence? This should be fine if they didn't muck with the default sequence. I don't know. Um, Shouldn't allow uh, sequence numbers. <laughs> well, we have to for these conversion things. But yeah, I, otherwise I completely agree with you. Sequence numbers are evil. So, oh, and then this director yeah. equals yeah. not blank. That's kind of trippy too. Um, uh, you could say that dark should handle this and the VD project thing should handle it. I'm, Or we can just... I. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> what do people want to do? I, I. Dark is only so. It's like dark gets you so far, and then you have to go clean it up. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to go do the work to go make it significantly better than that. I, I'm. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm there. I think. Um, it, dark is not a conversion tool. It's a decompiler. Yeah. Um, I know. And it did that perfectly. Stuff. Presumably. Yeah. Well, it, it, yes, right. It maintained uh, the sequence numbers for things it didn't know what to do with. Right. Um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I would say to get the, uh, <laughs> I, 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 so, a little tiny bit of me wants to say that we should I vote ver that we say verify that Dark did the right. Dark did what it's designed to do. I agree, I agree with Jacob. It could, if it's a sequencing problem, you know, maybe it could be smarter about using before and after rather than, than hard coding the sequence number if that's actually causing a problem here. Um, yeah, I don't know that it is. The, the target there equals blank is, is sketchy, too. Because um, if they set target there anywhere, well, like, depending on the sequence. Yeah, that's a very strange thing to put there. I, I, <laughs> this is a yeah. Is it it's, a, it's a decompiler, not a not a converter. I, <laughs> Yeah, it, it got you t to this point. You may have to fix it a little bit further. I, I, I'm okay I mean, with that. I, I've decompiled huge MSIs created with old versions of Install Shield, and Dark did a brilliant job. But I still had to go in and put all sorts of things. But that was generally because of all the extra yeah. chuff that Install Shield put. So, so yeah, I, I'm inclined to let. Personally, I would say let's close this as the close this bug and say, look, Dark is a decompiler. Will get you so far. You may have to clean up some things. And then we would accept a feature if someone wanted to go write the a deeper converter, you know, go teach Dark even more about VDProj. 
weirdnesses. I would do that, but that would get us a feature, not a bug, and it's not with none of this information. It's not this information. We need more details of what the conversion needs to be. That's the way I would vote. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. All right, cool. So let's help this guy get to Wix users. Um, assuming it's a guy, this person get to Wix users, and then to get support for the decompiler part, and then leave open the option that if someone wanted to write a feature that was dark. We could take that in 3x. Cool. That works for me. All right. I like this not having to type thing. I can move on. All right. Source zip file. Oh, I remember this bug. Yeah. So there's people that download the source zip and ask why it doesn't compile. Um, it's there for reference, which it is there for reference. Um, code is on co Codeplex, and you can download a zip from there. Um, so instead of us providing a zip file, we could have Codeplex provide the zip file. So this is an interesting thought. Um, I, I thought about this a little bit, and so I put my comments here, which people can read that are watching. Um, it basically, it comes down to we need the source zip to match the PDB zip. And that's its purpose, is such that if you get stuck on a remote machine and you have nothing, you can download the PDBs and the zip and the PDB zip and the source zip and be able to debug with very high fidelity. That's what it's there for. To do that, they have to stay in lockstep, which is why I think we need to continue to ship the source zip and the PDB zip together, um, at least for individual releases. Now, technically speaking, for the final release, because the CodePlex will give you the zip file at the you know the latest zip file for any given branch, we could, as long as we always branch at a final release, use the zip file from CodePlex to debug a final release. So we'd have the PDBs, you'd be able to go to CodePlex, get the zip file, and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't know that it's worth it there either. I Maybe the end result of all this is just we need to make it even more clear that this source does not compile. Like maybe we remove the stuff that lets it compile and we only keep the source code in it. Uh, so one approach that I've seen with projects like the, the MSYS Git distribution of Git that everyone uses on Windows, Mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of others is the idea of having a development package that is what you use when you want to do something like this. Um, in this case, we could just bundle the PDBs in the, at the source. That's a good idea. That's actually, you know, that might actually be the thing to do is just put the source in with the PDBs. It probably compresses well. Um, chances are, if you want the PDBs, the source is going to help you. You know, that's probably the right answer. I think you're right. I think that's the right answer. We should do that. That's probably the best answer of all of this, is we should just combine them. Um, should we do that for 3.8? We should do that for 3.8, huh? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's one of those things that you might as well, if, if you plan to do it in 3x, we should do it as soon as possible. It's a good idea. It, it is what we should do. Um, and I think we should do it in 3x, because it will just solve this problem. Yep. Yeah, all right, we should do that. Um, we'll leave it open for now. Um, if worst comes to worst, I'll, I can jump on it at the end of 3.8 to fix it, or you know later, if nobody else gets around to doing it. It's not hard to do, by the way. Anybody that wants to take this bug, this is a very straightforward bug. It's just going to take some building. You just go into the Wix 3.8, wherever you enlisted, go to source, go to setup. In there, there's a zips directory, you'll find two zip projects that list the files that need to be zipped, and you just condense those down to one zip file. So there's only one. And what do we call it then? The dev zip No, the debug zip file? Hmm. The name of it's going to be interesting. So that sounds like a great conversation for Wix devs. But all in all, I think we should take this. We should find out the way to implement this as per what Bob said. Cool? Works for me. All right. Ship it. Let's take up a quick question. Shoot. Um, I'd raised some bugs on SourceForge whenever that would have been. Um, would they have been carried over or were they sort of... They should off? have been. We should, As long as you didn't uh, send bugs within a uh, two-hour window, I think they should have got them all. Okay. So, but you can go look on... If you, if you go look on SourceForge, you can go look for your bug, and it should be marked migrated, which means that it did get moved. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. All right, my bundle uses the web to be sure that NetFX is installed. On one consumer, my product fails to run. Detecting XP had release candidate installed, even though versions of that 
should perform strict version check otherwise they are unreliable also because RC cannot be upgraded to final I expect the installer would at least fail so wait we detected the RC as a valid .NET framework the RC of .NET 4.0 yes um, oh was, well then it, well, yeah this this was an RC released over three years ago I uh, I, I, I care I, very little <laughs> I care zero but I, I, this is one of those things where I don't it affects you know two customers, two people in on the planet, and it would mean changing detection that we know works for RTM. And, I absolutely and, do not want to take this. And more than that, it makes RTM more complicated for all those people that this doesn't happen. So yeah, no, I I appreciate their pain, and that's that's yes, and customers should never have been on RC for that long. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know how you pull that off unless you're completely disconnected from the internet. Well, they had a release candidate of 2010, and that had the release candidate on their framework. Yeah, no, and yeah, like Jacob said, we don't support RC. So, yeah, and I, I I feel their pain, but no, we're not going to make everybody's lives worse during their install to support this edge case that is not a real world scenario normally. All right, we're at 10 o'clock. I think we're going to end on that happy note um, of. No. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many bugs we got through. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're doing about. Well, it's a little less than we got through last time, but I think we had a couple more. No, plus the three or four bugs that we got through that were 2013 related. So that's um, this bug. Uh, Jacob, yes, if you want us to go do a bug earlier, we will totally, If let's make that official. If you join the meeting and you want to only be on triage for long enough to cover your bugs, we will happily skip to your bug first. All you have to do is let us know in the comments, hey, I'd like to have this bug covered. Um, so let's go do that. Oh, well, all right, and Jacob's mentioning the two insignia bugs. So Jacob, oh, yes, right. Hey, Bob, you want to take care of Jacob's two, 4056 and 4055? Since we already accepted the pull request, can we just open those bugs for him so that he can do the cool deed of taking it and resolving it himself and have the, the satisfaction of having resolved bugs assigned to him so I don't know, he can get his badge at the end of the year or whatever we do with that? <laughs> it's not coming out of my budget. Uh, uh, yeah, the gold star. It's a virtual gold star. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're just so sorry. The code's already in. You you merged the pull request. Yeah, the pull request is in. So if you can just get those two bugs as open, then he should be able to take them because they should be un triaged by anybody. So Jacob, go ahead and take your two bugs after they're open. You'll see the take it button, and then by taking it, you should be able to edit it and resolve it and declare success. Um, and we'll try to get ahead of those bugs in the future so that we don't take the pull request before we have the bugs open as opposed to untriaged. Uh, did you take them into three eight? Yes, they were in 3.8. Okay. Um, and the Jacob, we can discuss the rest of the thing on Wix devs, and so we have a track of a record of it there. Um, I don't want to keep people on this call for uh, too much longer. We need to move on. I'm actually going to have a meeting in not too long myself. So uh, great another week. Thank you for triage. Uh, gentlemen. I guess it's all gentlemen this time. And uh, we will um, do this again, I think, next week, since we have plenty. Um, at the rate of 10 or 12, 15 per week, we only have a lot more left to do. Um, 18 months worth. Is oh. that all? All right. Yeah. yeah. My kid's older than that. I remember how long that took. So, all right. Let's do that. Uh, from here, sign off. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, gentlemen, for helping out. And we will uh, meet back here. Uh, same time, same place, same bat phone, all that kind of good stuff. Um, have a great week. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much. Cheers.